All right, good afternoon. I'm Chief J.D. McClure of the Gwinnett County Police Department. Today I'll be providing an update as it relates to the death of 16-year-old Susanna Morales of Norcross, Georgia. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to extend my condolences to the family, friends, and former classmates of Susanna on behalf of the Gwinnett County Police Department. Additionally, I will take you through a brief timeline of events and then provide for you uh, an update as to where we are today. On July 26th at approximately 6 p.m., we know that Susanna Morales left her home on Santa Ana Drive in Norcross and walked a short distance to the Sterling Glen apartment complex on Indian Trail Road. There, she met with her friend for about four hours and at about 10 o'clock, she began her trek back to her house. We know that between 10 and 10.30 p.m., uh, Susanna had an interaction with an individual and ultimately was not seen or heard from again. This case was immediately assigned to our Criminal Investigations Division, who worked diligently on this case and followed up on a number of leads and tips. However, those leads and tips did not come to fruition. We know that on uh, February the 6th, a citizen who was walking in the area of Drowning Creek Road and Highway 316 happened upon skeletal remains. The Gwinnett County Police Department sealed that crime scene, the crime scene, or correction, the uh, Gwinnett County Medical Examiner took custody of those remains and they were positively identified as having belonged to Susanna Morales. The following morning, February 7th, uh, we brought out a large contingency of police personnel and conducted a methodical and meticulous search known as a grid search. And during that search, we located a firearm that had been reported stolen on um, July 27th. This is the same day that Susanna was reported missing. That firearm we traced back to a 22-year-old former Dorville police officer named Miles Bryant. Bryant then became a person of interest in our case. We continue investigating and on February 13th we secured warrants for concealing the death of another. Since that time, our criminal investigators have been working uh, this case continuously and we have reached a threshold to where these charges have now been upgraded to felony murder and kidnapping charges. I would like to thank the Gwinnett County District Attorney's Office for their assistance along with the Dorville Police Department. And at this time, I'll take any questions that you may have. Is it possible that Ms. Morales was raped? There was mention of that earlier. There is a possibility, and one of the things I really want to do now is, is talk about the timeline, okay? Recall my earlier statement. Susanna went missing sometime between 10 and 10.30 p.m. on July 26th. Our investigation has revealed that she died, we believe, sometime between the time she was taken, between 10 and 10.30, and 2 a.m. on the morning of the 27th. You'll recall, she was reported missing on the morning of July 27th at 9 a.m. So by the time she was reported missing, we have every reason to believe that Susanna was deceased. Can you talk about the possible relationship between Morales and Bryant? Have you been able to make any sort of connection? Did they know each other? Was he the person who approached, or you said that there was an individual? Just talk about Correct. what relationship, if any. Right. So again, we know that Susanna visited her friend at Sterling Glen apartment complex where uh, Bryant served as the courtesy officer. We have looked at, at the idea or if there was some type of knowledge or relationship but so far we have not made that connection. So we do not know uh, if she knew or was familiar with Brian in any capacity. So are there any video cameras there? Are there any video cameras at that apartment? Not that I'm aware of. Was Susanna shot? We have no information to indicate that she was shot. So how did she die? We don't definitively know. We're still investigating. What we do know is that she died at the hands of Miles Bryant. Did you say uh, she was uh, reported missing on the 27th. That's correct. And at that time, the police department knew that she was dead? Did you say that? What did you say? No. No. Susanna was reported missing at 9 a.m. on the 27th. Her parents had looked for her throughout the, the prior evening. However, she was reported missing at 9 a.m. 
What we've learned throughout the course of our investigation is that she likely died between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. on the 27th. Those kidnapping and murder charges, those are in addition to the concealing of death and the false report? That's correct. You spoke about the timeline. Do you talk about anything as far as with herself or anything like that that led you to this timeline? So I won't go into the details of, of what we have learned um, with respect to the investigation because it's still active. Um, however, we do have uh, evidence that we've uncovered uh, from several sources, uh, electronically and, and things of that nature. When you say she came into contact with an individual between 10 and 10.30, are you saying that individual is Miles Bryant? Yes, I am saying uh, Miles Bryant. Do and you were saying Bryant, she went to visit a friend at the place where Bryant lived? Correct. Did anyone see the two of them together? We have no information that those two were saw together. Again, using our investigative skills, um, we placed the two of them together. Is there any evidence that Miles Bryan used his capacity as a police officer to possibly commit this crime? That we don't know, but we are still investigating that angle. There's been some reports that there was another woman who had some issues with Bryan. Do you guys believe there are additional victims that either may have been killed by him or may have had some other kind of harmful interaction with them. So to be clear, we have no information at this time linking Miles Bryant to have uh, harmed someone in, in a similar fashion. What we do know is that in 2018, uh, Miles Bryant uh, lived next door uh, to a neighbor. We know that uh, uh, in 2018, he went to this neighbor's house and allegedly tried to enter the house through a, a window. Uh, the police were called. Uh, we conducted an on-scene investigation. Uh, Miles Bryant countered that argument or that allegation. Um, the homeowner in that case did not wish to, wish to prosecute, uh, and so that case ultimately was resolved. Uh, there is a 2022 case, December of 2022, uh, in which Miles Bryant uh, visited the home of an acquaintance. Um, we believe that he may have tried to enter uh, a residence, um, and we're conducting an investigation on that case. We do believe that warrants are forthcoming. Those 2018 and 22 cases, were they the same apartment complex where he lived? No, they were not. We were, the one in AC, I'm sorry. Go ahead, ma'am. We received a press release on the 31st asking for, or pretty much offering a reward for the, any information Correct. on Morales. What kind of sparked that press release if she had been missing since July 27th? Why did that press release just randomly get sent out? Right. I wouldn't necessarily call it random. Throughout the course of our investigations, um, issuing lookouts and bulletins are standard fare within our investigation. So it certainly wasn't random. Uh, there wasn't anything in particular that sparked that release. Again, we're always uh, looking for information from the public uh, to aid us in our cases. The Hispanic United Alliance has been very critical of you all saying you don't take crimes against Hispanics seriously. What do you say to them? Uh, first, I take exception to that uh, assertion. Um, the Gwinnett County Police Department has a long track record of providing professional law enforcement services in our community. Um, we value the human sanctity uh, of life, and our uh, mission is to provide professional law enforcement services in an unbiased and compassionate manner to all our citizens, and that's what we do. You know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. As a police officer yourself, to know that, you know, a police officer has been charged with this kind of crime. What sort of feelings do you have on the fact that you have a trusted member of the community who's held in high regard uh, accused of a crime like this? Well, first of all, this is an unspeakable tragedy. Um, this type of crime at the hand of a law enforcement officer uh, evokes anger uh, even within the ranks of this agency. Um, to your point, police officers should always be pillars of trust. And I do believe uh, that the overwhelming majority of the hundreds of thousands of law enforcement officers in this community are honorable and decent uh, human beings. It's a shame that Miles Davis uh, was able to get in the ranks of law enforcement, um, but I am uh, happy with the department's response in terms of bringing him to justice. Are you Maria, Maria Brand, uh, the mother of Susana Morales, yes, waiting for many, many answers. So, as a Hispanic journalist, how we can give some answers to this mother who is waiting for more details about her daughter's life. Right. So our criminal investigations, the lead investigator is in direct contact with the Morales family. 
Uh, and we have been in contact with Morales family since she went missing. So um, that information has been readily provided as, as well as updates in this case along the way. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Did you mention about the motive behind this crime? The motive? I, I don't want to speak to motive at this time. Again, we're still we're still investigating. Do you know how or, or how are you able to determine that Miles Cry thought of uh, false report for his gun stolen? Could he argue that the person who stole his gun might be responsible for this crime? So I don't want to speak to Miles uh, Bryant defense. I, I can't speculate on that. Um, however, uh, we have a very solid case, and we're very confident. Do you believe he acted alone? At this point, there's no information to indicate that anybody else was involved. Can you tell us about any kind of red flags during, you know, his, his time as an officer? Right. So I will have to refer you to the Dorville Police Department uh, for, for that uh, answer. I do not have uh, his, uh, th that information readily available. Because it was so close to Susanna, do you believe you might have been watching her for, for a period of time before this incident happened? It's entirely possible. Uh, I can't say that definitively, but it's, it's possible. Yeah, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. When and how the Winnick County Police Department uh, make a link between uh, Susanna Morales uh, to uh, Mario Bryant? Is your question how do we make the leap yes. or how do we make the link? Yes. Um, when and how? Again, I'll, I'll take you back to the work we did at the crime scene. Um, just a phenomenal job investigating and locating that critical piece of evidence. We located a firearm, as I mentioned before, that Miles had reported stolen. At that point, he became a purchase of interest. Uh, so we began watching him and watching his activities. Um, our investigators were able to uncover information that directly linked uh, Bryant to this crime. Go ahead, sir. So far, the Hispanic community is uh, very cautious about what the Gwinnett County Police is doing. There are comments, or tells and comments in uh, social media, not just in Spanish, also in English, mm -hmm. about what the Gwinnett County Police is doing and the relationship with the Hispanic community. What is trying to do your uh, office to help to build up this relationship? Because right now it's really, really bad. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's your assertion. Of, of the relationship. I happen to believe that it's good. Um, we work constantly to build relationships with our community, all of our community. As I said before, we, we, we place a high value on the sanctity of human life. Um, but it's up to our commanders and our officers in the field to continue to build those relationships. Um, I can tell you that we work hard on all criminal investigations. And I think this arrest speaks to that fact. Go ahead, man. Between uh, the clear missing person or disappeared person, or right away? Right. So, the initial information that we had was that Susanna, and I want to use this word very carefully, had possibly run away. Regardless of that fact, a lot of our initial investigative steps to locate a person are very similar. So, again, this case was immediately assigned to an investigator, and they began following up on leads uh, trying to locate Susanna. So what are the next steps in the case? You mentioned that you're still investigating. So does Miles have an attorney? Or where do we go from here? So uh, again, uh, the criminal investigators continue to work and build their case. We continue to work hand in hand with the district attorney's office. That's a very important uh, part of our process. Um, and then ultimately, this, this case will play out in the courts. Uh, he'll, have, he'll have essentially his, his, his day in court. Just what? I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I wanted to clarify about the apartment complex. You kind of mentioned it both ways. Did he all live and work there? As a yes. He so, so he lived at the Sterling Glen apartment complex, but he also worked as, uh, my understanding, as a security officer. So he may have carried out security details on behalf of the management there. And when he worked there, did he wear his doorbell uniform? That, that I don't know. I, I might have missed this, but do you have a location of where this murder might have happened? We, I do not. We're still working on it. Uh, this weapon that was found, uh, had he reported it stolen before or after uh, she had gone missing? Uh, so, Susanna was reported missing at 9 a.m. on the 27th. I believe uh, Mr. Bryant filed the uh, stolen weapon report, um, which was a false report of a crime, uh, sometime around 11 a.m. on the 27th. You're talking about you know, the relationship with the community. Obviously, having a police officer <coughs> killing someone is not great for that relationship. How do you, you know, keep the 
public's trust if you have someone wearing the uniform committing a crime like this. Right. Um, so again, as I said earlier, we work hard to build relationships in the community. Um, when you have an event like this happen, a uh, tragic loss of, of, of a young, uh, beautiful girl at the hands of a law enforcement officer, um, there's no doubt that, that some of that trust is going to be broken. Uh, however, the challenge for um, us and the law enforcement community as a whole is to continue to build those relationships and build those contacts. Does anybody else have any other questions? So you just mentioned trust. Are there going to be new trainings? What are you all going to do to make sure that this hopefully doesn't happen ever again? The Gwinnett County Police Department has, we've done what we needed to do here. We've, we've met our mission. We've solved this crime. And I, I don't want to uh, just have us reduce that as just, you know, something marginal. Uh, that was an exhaustive and extensive investigation. Uh, and so I'm really proud of our, our personnel for, for putting this case together. Uh, in terms of uh, standards, I think the Gwinnett County Police Department has the highest standards uh, for our employees. Um, and I'm sure uh, the Doraville Police Department um, will, will likewise address their policies and procedures as well. Do you believe, Brian, um, the gun you found, do you believe you used that to kill her? As I said earlier, um, I, don't, I don't believe that, that she was shot. That, that, that I can't tell you. You don't believe she was shot? I do not. I don't have evidence or, you know, the medical examiner's finding was, was that, that that was the case. So we, we don't believe that that was the case. Do we know the man out there? We're still investigating. You, you mentioned that there was a gun was found at the scene where the body was found. Is that correct? In close proximity, yes, sir. There, there were some information that she was uh, uh, there naked. It was true, or was it the, the condition? When she was I, I won't talk about the condition of Susanna's body. You may have mentioned it already, but was the weapon his service weapon or personal? It appears to have been a personal weapon. Did it so what role, if any, there was just an, a gun that belonged to him that was found near her body? Correct. But you don't think that it had anything to do with the death? We believe that Miles uh, was armed at that site, we believe that at some point uh, he may have simply lost the weapon there. Okay. Is this a handgun or like a light? It's a handgun. Final questions. Anything else? Any idea how long her body was there? I, I just with it being half a mile away from her residence and she was already reported missing, what took so long to find her body if it was only half a mile away from her home? Well. It was certainly not a half a mile away. It was numerous miles away. We're talking about from Nor Norcross, Georgia to Lawrenceville, okay? Secondly, um, Susanna was recovered in the wood lines. So there was a reason why, you know, she wasn't readily discovered. Is this from the, the railroad property? This I, I'm unfamiliar, sir. There were some uh, uh, indication that the police was trying to get uh, dental records from her, from the mom, and then before the body was discovered. The police has any clue at the time that the body could be in the wooden area when the, the uh, dental records were requested? That's sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Procedure on a missing person. Okay. Did, um, did the police have any chance, or do you know, if he used this gun to lure her? And any we do not know. Location. We do not know. That 2018 case, was that at Sterling Glen or is that going to be another apartment No, it was a, it was a, a family residence. Was that in Norcross as well? I think Lilburn. Okay. And then the last question is, was the police are capable to find out the body because the police pinned his phone, Miles' phone, and they tracked his movements? Sir, you're, you're kind of drawing conclusions. Um, yeah, and, and I would say, I can't answer that. Um, we've, we've investigated multiple uh, angles in this case, including obviously the use of cell phones. Um, what can you leave your message to our community if we have a missing in our, in our home? Um, I think obviously call the police uh, immediately. Let us get out, let us begin working that case. I think one of the important things to, to remember with family members and friends is that if they have key information about the whereabouts of a loved one, 
then we need those people to come forward and help us during those cases. Um, I think a lot of times um, folks are reluctant to come, to come forward in missing person cases for a variety of reasons. But that's one of the things that, that we look for. Um, do you have a control car as a apartment? And is it possible he may have used that to kind of get her trust uh, to get him to go with him? So I would be speculating on, on him attempting to develop any type of trust. He was issued a patrol car that, that he took home daily. Um, so. Thank you guys very much right. for coming.